uh, professional appearance, you know, going that route with it. It does take a little bit more time. Um, one thing that you can do is when you make your buttons, just make the picture box completely without, la you know, layering over it with a label. And I guess that would probably be the better thing to do, but this is a free game. So, you know, not putting a whole lot of effort. Some, but not a whole lot. Alright, so anyway, enable and disabling your buttons. Very important to have this um, because when you're out there quote unquote scaring people, you can't sit there and reheal yourself or do other things. You need to disable those buttons. Um, really important when you're in your battles that you disable some of the buttons so people can't cheat, whatnot. Just use common logic f for figuring that out. Next thing is the heal. Um, people are going to probably attempt to cheat, so that's why this is in here. So if your health is greater than or equal to 30 and you're at level 1, you can't go over 30. That's as much as you can heal. Alright, so that's why that's there. It's to prevent people from healing too much pretty basic concept. So I'll go ahead and write down this code. If you notice a lot of my code will repeat itself as well. Um, that's done intentional. A lot of code. I, I build my code simple so I can just you know pound it out. I can take something that would take somebody six months and I can pound it out in a week. Because I simplify the code. I optimize it. You know, it's just so simple you can just literally copy and paste you know it's easy to troubleshoot you know there's not complicated algorithms going on or anything crazy it's just very straight to the point very simple code that you can read like reading a book so that's something you want to consider when you're writing your code alright so here's the train button very similar as to the heel click Go ahead and close that. Here's our random coins. Now, if you guys need to get a piece of code that you didn't get, and I'm going through this too quickly, you know, obviously this is on YouTube, so you can just pause. All right, so, and if you have questions about code as well, feel free to post to that as well. I'll try to answer them best I can. All right, so anyway, this is pretty much just a random variables. Uh, it's doing a level comparison. You know, if you're at this level, you get this many amount of coins, and if not, you know, you get something else. So, and it, once again, it's a random, one through ten. It'll randomly pick one of those. Next thing that we've seen was the list box. Now, technically, you don't need this case zero in there. I threw it in there though as a marker for myself because that's the one that says just locations on the actual list box but you don't have to have that in there if you don't want but you do need to have locations because on a list box it always starts out with the title for some reason and then it actually starts the cases one below your first listing I don't know why it works that way I suppose you could probably figure out how to fix that but I don't know how and I've never really messed with it so there you go but anyway, here's what we have going on. Um, when you start it out, it's going to change your background to the scaring people. It's going to disable your buttons. It's going to load, or you're going to be able to see the progress bar. It's going to pick a sound effect, and it's going to start our time, my timer. Now this code just pretty much repeats itself. Once you get up to here, then it starts checking for level. So that's pretty much the difference. So we scroll down and we come to our timer. This is the part that you're probably one I'm gonna pay attention to the most. Alright, so here's my progress bar. I increment one at a time. You could do 10 or whatever. It goes all the way up to 100. 
is my maximum value. So that's what we got going on here though. Um, when it's done, it's visible false. It stops the timer, of course. And the value goes back to zero. Stops the music. And then it does a check. And it checks to see if you're level one or whatever. And this is where this would be the equivalent of like a drop system. You know, it does your monster picker. What the monster picker is doing is resetting your image back from scary to whatever your monster value was. It's subtracting from your health, randomly doing coins, giving you experience, updating your labels, re-enabling the buttons, doing a death check to make that sure that you're still alive, and it's doing a check for your bonus. If your hit power is greater than or equal to 10, and then you then you get extra health, you know, and so on and so forth. And it just does it just gives you random extras. Well, not random, but you get the idea. And then, of course, I close it all out. So that's how I did the timer. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Let's go to game over. Very simple code in here. Very simple. We got our countdown. If you don't know how to do a countdown, this is how you do one. Very useful. Um, this is done in seconds, so this is actually two seconds. I'm just telling the timer to stop. Countdown equals two. I'm resetting the timer to two. Telling the audio to stop, and I'm telling it to go back to the main menu, and then close this one. If that's not true, then you know just subtract one until it equals zero. Now here's the load. Instantly starts the timer. Instantly starts my background music. So that's game over. Here's main menu. Again, fairly basic. Let's view the code. Now this time we actually are going to use um, our monster class. So I imported it and I'm actually going to use it to load up the forms you know the different forms that need to be new forms that's why it says game form equal new game form so it's refreshing it's pretty much though pretty basic stuff in here uh, the pick monster a little bit more complicated well not complicated just more code I should say alright so what we got going on here is we've got my picker and then we've got my selected. Here's our picker for the select case. Picker gets used twice. And this is for the click forward button. So every time that you click forward, your selected is going to equal something. Like one, two, three, four, five, six. What it's saying is that your monster selected, or your potential to select that, is equal to that. And then picker is just going to count up from one. So we go two, three, four, five, you know, and so on and so forth. It's just staying an increment. When it gets all the way up to ten, it just goes back to one, so it can recycle through. Same concept. It's just re in reverse for backwards. And then here's what happens when you actually click on this button. <clears throat> All right, so let's say that you had a monster selected. Let's say you had monster three selected. So it's going to come over here because your selected is going to equal three. It's going to say that your monster number, the global variable, is three. And it's going to say that monster selected is true because you did select a monster. And then it's going to load our game form. And then it's going to close. And we're going to go to the game menu where you can actually play. So, pretty basic stuff. Once again, just repeating itself. Obviously, you can do a lot with this. This is a very good baseline code for somebody to take 
you know, and build off of it. If you want to make your own game with it, that's that's fantastic. The only thing I ask is don't don't take my code, my default code, and just you know do exactly what I did. Make something of your own. Be an individual. You know, create your own thing. All right, so post comment don't forget to post on my forums as well visit my website you know, it's always great to hear what you guys think about the YouTube videos and etc um, feel free to post on the forums if you have a specific need or something that you want to learn um, go ahead and feel free to post it on there I know I didn't go over inventory systems that's something that you could add to this game I didn't go over animations that's something that you could add to this piece of software, you know, there's lots of things that you could add to this. Alright, so feel free to post it if you have a question about it, how to do it. I'll try to help you the best I can. Alright, thanks.